Welcome to Keisha's Heat Illness Considerations and Prevention Strategies video. I'm Erin Washington. Wayne Harmon. Jamie Blackham. Cooper Sachs. We are athletic trainers in Kansas here to show you how to prepare your site for heat illness and respond accordingly. Anytime ambient air temperature is 80 degrees or above, a rapid cooling area should be established and available. Rapid cooling equipment consists of the shade. You've got cooler of water, ice ready to go. You have wet bulb globe thermometer, your technique of immersion or method of cooling nearby, ready to go, and rectal thermometer used by trained medical professionals only. It's important to follow your emergency action plan that has been implemented as well as be in communication with local EMS for local procedures. If no emergency action plan is established, a sample template's available on page one of the Keisha Exertional Heat Illness Recognition and Management document. Coaches, staff, athletes, and parents should be aware of signs and symptoms of exertional heat illness. These can be reviewed on page 10 of the Keisha Exertional Heat Illness Recognition and Management document. When it comes to the management of heat-related il illnesses, remove athlete from play immediately, remove any excess clothing or equipment. If they are alert, water or sports drink slowly. If exertional heat stress is suspected, this is a life-threatening condition. Call 911 to activate your emergency medical systems as soon as possible. Remember the phrase, cool first, transport second. Make sure to rehearse and review your emergency action plan with coaches and local emergency personnel before each school year. The TACO method, or TARP assisted cooling oscillation, is another cold water immersion technique that's a little bit more budget friendly if you can't swing by in a tub or a kiddie pool because all you need is a tarp and some people to hold it and some coolers. Basically what you're looking to do is you're gonna have, you're gonna add ice and water to the athlete once they're sitting in the tarp. So they're gonna be in the middle of the tarp. You're gonna need at least probably two people at the head, one at the foot, and you're basically creating a taco. And then you're gonna look to dump water in towards the feet, but you wanna make sure that their chest is still elevated. So you're gonna lift this head part. Once the athlete's inside, you dump the water in. And then once all the water's in, you're gonna dump ice in there as well. If the athlete's lethargic, it's important to make sure you have another person using a towel or a pool noodle to hold their head up out of the water. And then once you get the ice and the water in there, you wanna to start to oscillate. So it's just shifting from side to side. The individual needs to be continuously supported upright and monitored for altered levels of consciousness. Never leave the person unattended and be ready to perform CPR if needed. Have your AED nearby, ready to go. If a medical professional is on site, the individual's core body should be obtained by using a rectal thermometer. This type of measurement is recommended by medical experts as the most effective method to determine if the individual is suffering from exertional heat stress. Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos and we hope you found them helpful.